Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at the middle region, region number two, where the particle can reside quite freely because the energy required to be there simply can be anything larger than zero. We also have realized from the previous video that a particle in a finite potential well could part-time or for a small region exist in the barriers on either side, but we'll explore that a little bit more later. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Schrodinger equation for the middle region now. Again, we know that the energy to go over the barrier must be greater than uh, U. If energy is greater than U, of course, the particle can leave the barrier because then you're, the energy is greater than the er energy of the barrier. But in region 2, the Schrodinger equation will look like this. And of course, E then represents the energy of the particle within that region. M would be the mass of the particle, and of course, h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. So the general solution of this type of differential equation looks like this. It's the sum of the sine and the cosine with a couple of constants, a and b, in the front. And so the, the term in front of the x will be the square root of 2me over h bar, basically the square root of this right here on both the sine and the cosine part. Now, when the barrier was infinite, we realized that b must be 0. This must be 0 because if this isn't 0, for x equals 0, we have the cosine of 0 equals 1. And of course, for an infinite barrier, we have to have 0 for this particular part right here, for b. But here, we don't have to worry about that because when x is equal to 0, the function solution for region 2 must equal the function solution for region 1. And since we know that the function, which we found on the previous video right here, is not equal to zero for x equals zero, when we want them to match up, we then realize that when we plug in a zero for x over here, and we plug in a zero for x over here and over here, of course, the sine of zero is zero, this will go away, but the cosine of zero is equal to one, so we have one times b must equal this function right here when we plug in a zero over here. And that's what we have written here. We plug in a zero for the x over here, and c e to the zero simply becomes c. And then we plug in a zero for x for the second function for region two, and then we realize that, that the function will equal b. In other words, c must equal b. The constant we used for the a function solution in region 1 must equal the, the constant that we have over here for the second term of our solution in region 2. Then if we look at the other side when x equals L and of course here x equals 0 and here x equals L that's the width of the box then we can see that the solution for region 2 must also equal the solution for region 3. There must be continuation of the function over there which means that if we plug in an L here for solution for region 3, for X, and we plug in an L over here and over here for the solution for region 2, then those must also equal to one another. Now, since these are functions varying with the sine and the cosine, the only way that they can be equal to each other, that is, if we plug in a very specific value for E in each case. In other words, they can only match up for special values of the energy, and so we're going to call those quantized energies E sub n, and we'll explore those a little bit later. So for these solutions to match on the left side, all we have to do is realize that the constant B must equal to the constant C, which is right here, and for the solution to match up on the right side, at the other side of the well, we must make sure that this is a true statement, and that again can only happen for very specific values for the angle for sine and very, very specific values for the angle for the cosine. So for very specific values for E, can the right side equal the left side? And so there we have the quantization of energy that allow only certain kind of behavior for the particle in region 2. When you realize that we expect a decaying presence or function on the left side in region 1, inside the barrier in region 1, and we expect the decaying function over here, the only way we can match that would be perhaps by a function that looks like this. So we take this and we match that up. So the height of the solution in 1 and 3 must then, of course, adapt to whatever the function is over here. Or perhaps we can have a function that might look like this. And of course, then we want to see that come down again over here. Or we may have a function that looks like this 
comes down like this, goes back up and goes back down. So you can see there's certain types of wave functions that would fit into our general solution for region two that could actually exist and match up with what will happen in region one and region three. And so we're going to explore those possible solutions for region two that will then match up with the solutions for region one and region three. So we can see that with a finite potential well, when we look at the physical structure of what that well looks like, we have to make sure that this function, the solution, or the equation to the, to the, to the possible functions in region two must nicely line up with the solution in one and three. And once we do that, we can then come up with a series of equations that will then allow certain quantized energies for the particle in region two so that we have a matchup with region one and region three. And that's how that works.